Hi guys, I'm Dan, DB3D Dan, whatever you want to call me, that's fine. The reason I'm making this video is because I haven't seen anything out there yet on how to install the eMMC and get an operating system up and running on the Libre uh, Computer 805, uh, also known as Lefrit. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that here in this video. I'm going to give you guys a quick little how-to on how to get the uh, eMMC installed. Actually, I've already got it installed, but I'll show you where it goes. It's real simple. Snap it on, put two screws in, but uh, I will show you guys that process, uh, or at least show you guys the process on how to get an operating system up and running on the eMMC after you've gotten it installed. For this, you will need another SMB or a SOC, whatever you want to call it. You'll need another Raspberry Pi or something along those lines, or a device that runs Linux to do this part. So... Let's jump over to the device. I'll show you guys what it looks like. You guys can, uh, you know, see what we're going to be working with here. All right, guys, this is the board. Uh, as you can see, I'll do a quick little walk around. you got two USB ports here, the U-boot button, your EMMC switch, which you want to make sure is switched up to EMMC and not NOR or NORM. You've got a micro USB, Ethernet adapter, HDMI. You've got your 40-pin header and a couple of other little ports on here as well as a IRC, or sorry, IRC, an IR uh, receiver. We flip this over, and this is where you install your eMMC. So you install your eMMC right here. There's two screws. It just snaps in place, put the two screws in, holds everything together. And in case that last bit was a little out of frame, uh, again, your eMMC is right here, snaps into place, the two screws hold it in. All right, guys. What we're going to do is go over to their little hub community and if you just in the hub type in eMMC the first thing that comes up is for the AML S905X-CC. These instructions will work for the 805XAC which is what we're using or the Lafrite. It's an interesting name means fry their other computer or one of the other computers or devices they have is called the potato so it's interesting they have the potato and the fry. But uh, these directions will work for that. Uh, all we have to do is remember that as we're going down the line here, we need to change the, the model number in some of the commands that we'll be typing. So when we get to that point, I will show you guys. Uh, first thing, it is saying the requirements. In this case, it says a lot potato, but we will replace the word potato with frit. And then, of course, we need the eMMC module, which I showed you guys, a USB-A to USB-A cable, which comes with uh, the eMMC modules when you purchase them with these guys. And then, of course, another computer running Linux, not AMD. They are saying there are some issues with AMD and the USB, the way it works. So they are saying to use an Intel-based system, or in this case, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi, which is an ARM-based system. Uh, it does say, uh, or an SBC with Windows or Mac OS might work. It is untested. I am using a Raspberry Pi because that is what works. So we're going to kind of continue down here. It says install the necessary tools to start cloning. Um, these steps I've already done, so for me, I will show you guys uh, kind of the process, but there is one little oops on the install guide here, and that is where it just says apt install. You want to do an sudo, whoops, if I could spell, sudo space uh, apt or apt install space tac y or dash y space python three dash usb again i've already installed this so it's just going to go through i had nothing to update or install but when it's done you'll be back at a command prompt just like you see here the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and clone this uh copy this script right here just copy i am running on the raspberry pi so it is easier to copy and paste right click paste that in I'm going to run this. It's going to give me an error at the end telling me that the file or folder already exists and is not empty. You guys won't see that. But see, it already tells me that the uh, it already exists. The directory is not empty. You guys won't see that. Again, it will go through the process of pulling in and cloning that uh, folder. So just go ahead, let that happen. And when it's done, you'll be back at a command prompt just like this. Now we go back to the directions here. It says detach all peripherals, including HDMI, USB, micro USB power. Uh, 
in the case of this board, I have found that you don't necessarily need to use the micro USB power cable, but it if you run into errors, it doesn't hurt to plug it in. Sometimes there's a, a voltage or a power issue that can cause it to not want to work properly. Uh, I've gotten pretty lucky when using this board. It seems to be a low enough power draw that the USB works for it just fine. Uh, that being said, though, we plug one end of the USB Type-A cable into the computer, SVC, and then the other end, or then what we need to do next is press and hold the K11 U-boot button on the board while attaching the USB, uh, one end of the USB Type-A cable into the top left. Now, on that board, it only has two USB cables, a left and a right. I've been using the left port because on the directions here for this guy, it says to use the top left. So I just assume, uh, error on the side of caution, we just use the, t the left port. So that's the port I use when I'm doing this. It seems to work just fine. And then, again, we want to make sure that there was nothing else attached. Uh, and if we needed to, we could go ahead and attach the auxiliary power. Uh, I'll run through this process here uh, for the sake of not having any issues. I will attach the auxiliary power just because I want to make sure it's going to work. And you guys may want to do the same thing, even though, like I said, it has worked without it in the past. Now we get down here, there's going to be a couple of commands we're going to need to type. But first, we need to make sure the board is prepped properly. So let's jump over there and get the board set up. I'll show you guys what you need to do over there. All right, guys, over here at the board, you'll see, again, when you get your EMMCs from these guys, they do come with a USB-A to USB-A cable. We'll take one end and plug that into the Raspberry Pi, and then the other end, what we want to do, and here's the auxiliary power, by the way, guys. Make sure you uh, have something available there if you need it. So, sorry, <laughs> get myself situated here. Here we go. All right. We're going to take the USB, and what I like to do is take my thumb and hold down while I push down on the Ethernet jack. And then you just push that in and let go of the U-boot button, just like that. Plug it in, let go of the U-boot. Now, again, for the sake of headache, we plug in the auxiliary power. In this case, mine has a switch on it, so I'll turn the switch on. And there we go. That should be ready to go. Let's jump back over to the other computer and continue on. All right, guys, back over here. We're going to go ahead and start now with erasing the EMC uh, user partition table and bootloader. Run the following command. First thing you want to do is do a sudo. I'm not even going to try and say that, but we're going to do the erase. Just copy that and then right click in here and we're going to paste. And the first thing we need to do though, after that, and I need to quit saying the first thing we need to do, because I do that often, guys. So feel free to rip me apart in the comments if you need to on that. Is we need to change two things. We need to change it so it says S805X-AC. And then we hit uh, Enter. Now this will run through, and it's going to delete that boot partition. And there we go. It says running and done. Back to that. We're good to go. Now, the next thing we need to do, and I'm just going to type this in. I find it's a little easier. We don't have to change all that. It's just to erase the part that says erase and type UMS and then hit enter again. And now. Oh, that's correct. I'm sorry, guys. There was a step here that I did miss. We can only do one at a time. So first thing we've done was erase that. Now we need to pause, go back over redo the steps where we unplug the USB and the power and then hold the U-boot button. So let's jump over there and do that real quick. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Let's run through the process again. Again, my, my power cord has a switch on it that I can turn on and off. So I'm just going to leave that connected. That won't hurt anything. We're going to hold down on the network jack again. I hold down on the U-boot uh, button with my thumb, force that in, let go of the U-boot, and then flip the switch, turn power back on, and we've restarted the device. You're only allowed to do one of those commands per boot. So you had to do the one first to erase the uh, boot partition, the little one megabit boot partition, it says. And then you come back over here, restart the device, redo that, and we'll jump back over to the computer. All right, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and I just hit the up arrow here. We'll bring back that command with the uh, UMS, hit enter. And now it's running through, it's doing its little bit of writing and waiting, and when all said and done, you'll see done, and it says Raspberry Pi. 
there we go now we'll scroll down here just a little bit it says to uh let me let me get the screen up for you here there we go it says wait 10 seconds virtual usb drive should appear on your linux machine or sbc or s you know sbc small board computer um, and then we want to use the gnome image writer or dd uh, to flash this with this since i am running it with raspberry pi and it has the raspberry pi imager on it we should be able to click up here under the little raspberry scroll down under accessories and then you'll see discs right here or we have imager the imager does work for this so you don't necessarily have to use the the gnome uh, disk imager you can get away with using the raspberry pi imager it does seem to work so let's get prepped for that shall we all right guys we need to make sure we have an image or an os to go ahead and load on this thing what you want to do is go to the libre.computer site go to the 805 i can tell you right now the image is incorrect i have informed them of that so hopefully they'll get that fixed here on the site soon but then you'll scroll down to downloads and that's where you want to pick your os that you want to run and again i'm going to go ahead and run raspbian on it just because i like it and that's what i'm going to use you do have ubuntu rmbn debian and again another raspbian i'm not sure why there are two but uh, i did go ahead already and download the raspbian image to save myself some time you may want to go ahead and do that as well. I know I'm already into the process and of course better late than never, right? But uh, once you've got that downloaded, the next thing we want to do, now that we are set up as a USB device, is we're going to go in here, go to accessories, and we can just load the imager from Raspberry Pi if you're using one. If not, you'll want to get the GNOME desktop or the GNOME disk imager. First thing we need to do is choose our OS. In this case, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to use custom. And in my case, I want to go ahead and change my uh, drive that I am connected to. So give me a moment while we get that. All right, guys, once you navigate to where your image is at, you want to make sure you grab the right one. In this case, again, we have the 805AX. So we're going to select that as our image that we're going to go ahead and write. Then we need to choose the place that we're going to write it to. In this case, we want to make sure we look for the UMS disk zero. That is our uh, EMMC. And then in here, the only thing I want to do is enable SSH. We are going to go ahead and put in the lovely username and password, leave it as pi, and then we're going to put in R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, Raspberry, keep it pretty straightforward. And we're going to hit save. None of the other stuff really in here is important because this does not have Wi-Fi, so setting up Wi-Fi would not be something you could do. And then go ahead and hit Write. And then hit Yes. And then now we need to type in our password. So we type in the password and we let it go. This part is going to take a little while. It does need to write the image to the EMMC. Once it's done writing, it then goes ahead and verifies. So go ahead, sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and when it's all done, we'll come right back. All right, guys, once you're done, it'll come up to this screen here, letting you know that you can go ahead and remove your SD card from your reader. And in this case, we're not using an SD card, but that's okay. We just hit continue. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is just rebooting the device, bringing it up, crossing our fingers we did everything right, and we'll continue on with the setup process. So for me, it'll take a minute. For you guys, it's just a second. All right, guys, I got all the cables disconnected. I got everything plugged in so that we can bring this up and show it to you here. I got network connected. We've got our HDMI hooked up. We've got our power hooked up. And now we'll have our keyboard and mouse so that we can do some stuff in here got to hook up the old wireless dongle for the keyboard and mouse but let's go ahead and power this thing up we'll head on over to the other screen cross our fingers and pray that everything comes up like it's supposed to all right guys we're back let's hit that power button let's cross our fingers and hope that we see some stuff on the screen here that's a good sign right there that's an even better sign and once it does its little boot here hopefully We'll have ourselves a working Raspberry Pi OS on this thing, and we'll be able to do some stuff. It's running through the process. I see a lot of good stuff happening. Makes me happy. Once we get booted here, we'll finish up. Should be coming up here pretty quick. And there we go. 
Now it's just time to go through the config process, which is fairly simple. We just click on next there, select your region. In my case, I'm United States, American English, of course. Time zone for me is I'm central, so we'll use Chicago. And then I check the boxes to make sure that I am using the English keyboard or English language and the US keyboard. And then I click next and give this part a moment here. It's going to scan location or setting the location. All right, now we got to go ahead and set up our username and password. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. We'll see if it'll let us get away with Pi. And Raspberry. We'll see if it'll let us do that. Okay. It is telling me that that is a uh, pretty common one. But that's okay. We're using it anyway. And then it says here, some monitor settings. I just go ahead and click next on this. I'm not going to resize. And then as for the software updates, I'm going to click next and let them do that. This part could take a little while, so click next. It's going to run through, check, pull in any updates that it needs or that it can get. And I will be right back with you again. All right, guys. Once you're done with that, your updates are done. Everything is ready. It says systems updated. We click OK. And now we have to do a restart. So we'll click the restart button. Wait patiently here while it goes through the restart process. And when it comes back up, we should be booting into Raspberry Pi or the Raspberry Desktop. And we should see all those goodies. So fingers crossed we did everything right. The updates went through. Nothing broke. And pretty quick like, we'll see a new desktop. Just let it run through its process here. And there we go. We're in the desktop. So there you have it, guys. That's the whole process. Uh, it took only about 15, 20 minutes to do. It's not uh, super difficult. And I uh, hope that uh, if you guys are looking for some kind of an alternative to a Raspberry Pi, you'll check this thing out. Works pretty good. Runs pretty good. And I'm going to be doing a follow-up on this video that will probably come out a little bit later where we're going to go through the process of installing Clipper. So once we've gotten to this point, we're going to install Clipper and get it set up so that we can use it with our 3D printers. So hope you guys check back for that video. Have a good day. And as I like to say, stay out of trouble, stay out of jail. And happy 3D printing. Bye, guys.